Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about C++ namespaces and how you can create your own. So, have you ever wondered why you have to put using namespace STD in your uh, programs or why sometimes you'll see in sample code people write STD colon colon C out instead of just C out? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about that. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. First, I should probably define, you know, what, what's a namespace, all right? So a namespace, using that keyword namespace, it's a, it's a way to organize your unit in, or your code in logically created units, right? So you might want to group certain things like certain sets of classes or functions or variables or any combination into its own separate entity, into its own separate module unit. And so you can do that by using namespaces, okay? And you can create as many namespaces as you want. You give them all individual unique names, and then whatever you put inside a namespace, literally inside a namespace, is going to belong to that namespace. You can almost think of it as, um, you know, if you have the Brown, the Brown family or the Smith family. Okay, so there's going to be a bunch of people that are grouped in the Brown family. There's going to be a bunch of people that are um, grouped into the Smith family. Now, you might have John Brown. You might have John Smith. Okay, but which John is which? Well, there's John that belongs to the Brown family, and then there's John that belongs to the Smith family. So the logical groupings are the families, Brown, Smith, and then individuals within that family. You know, John's one of them, or Karen, or... Tim or Hank or whatever. So let's see how that can translate into code, okay? All right, so I got my Visual Studio up there and you can see that we've got using namespace STD, all right? So by putting that there, that's kind of a shortcut. It's, it's generally considered a bad idea, bad form, but in computer science classes, you know, intro computer science classes for beginners, we kind of just say, do it, just take our uh, word for it. Now, what that allows you to do is something like this. Um, hello world, where you can just type C out because C out is a member of the STD namespace. Okay, so what that means is that this is John of the Brown family. Okay, so C out is something that's defined within the STD namespace. So now I can, um, you know, build this and run and print out hello world and I just can type C out. Now, if I didn't include using namespace STD, then suddenly this doesn't work anymore. Okay, the ENDL also, you see how the little squiggles here? These are both items that are defined within the STD namespace. And so right now you take a look at C out in the ENDL, C++ doesn't know what to do with it because there's no definition of C out or ENDL. C out and ENDL are defined inside of IO stream, but they're also part of a namespace. So we have to specify, well, which C out? The one that belongs to STD, which ENDL? The one that belongs to STD, okay? So there's an ENDL that is defined inside of this namespace, so that belongs to the STD namespace. C out belongs to the STD namespace. So in addition to the STD namespace, which you know about from using namespace STD, you can create your own namespaces. So for example, I could use the keyword namespace and then come up with some identifier, let's say foo, okay? And then have a block, open and close and curly brace, and then everything that I put inside here, inside that block, I am literally putting inside of a namespace, okay? so. For example, I could create uh, a stupid class, you know, call it class A, do nothing class just for this example. Now, if I go into main and I try to define, you know, an, a uh, variable of type A here, what's going to happen? Right? I'm going to get that squiggle. Why? Because A is part of the foo namespace. It's not built in, right? I have to specify, you know, what I am talking about. Now, if I had done int a, well, that's going to work just fine because now all this is is just a variable name for a built-in data type. 
But now if I want to specify um, this A, if I want to create that A, then what I have to do is, is I have to say foo colon colon A, right? And now I can create that variable. Just like with C out saying, oh, I want the C out that belongs to namespace STD. Here I'm saying, oh, I want the A that belongs to namespace foo. Right, and you can do that with classes. You could do that with a variable, right? Let's say that I had a constant in here, const um, double pi. Oops, and I decided that within the foo namespace, within that logical entity, I wanted to have a pi that was an estimation of pi that was 34159, right? And so this pi is 3.14159 within this scope, within this namespace. So now, you know, I could, you know, as usual, create my own pi here, 3.141, say, okay? But I can also then access this pi right here or right because i could do something like this i could say um foo um pi right and so that's gonna get me 3.14159 which i could turn around and maybe assign to some other variable right maybe i'll do lowercase pi say right so now this is pi that was defined and belongs to main and I assigned it 3.14. And now this pi right here belongs to main, but I used the value that was defined in a named constant within the foo namespace. So I could turn around and do standard C out uh, pi. I could do the, the lowercase pi, and I could even do the uh, foo pi. Right, so something like this okay so let's go ahead and build it and run it and you'll see all those different pies up there right so there's the 3.143 3 3.14159 now why does it say three because i made a silly mistake right because pi here is an int in this pi and that belongs to foo is a double so i lost my decimal places so let's fix it and try it again okay so there you go now c out is something that is defined inside of IO stream. Okay. Now let us say that I brought back using namespace STD. So that way it's not required for me to have this anymore. Okay. So I can get rid of that little bit there. Now, since I'm using namespace STD, what would happen if I said, or I wanted to create a variable called C out? Okay, well, suddenly I'm going to have myself a little bit of a problem here, right? Because um, this variable, C out, we'll, we'll go ahead and assign it one or something. Okay, this C out and this C out kind of clash. Okay, so this one right here, this becomes integer C out. So this C out right here is being treated as if it was this integer not the one that's defined in the namespace STD. So right here, we're trying to send pi to an uh, int variable, and you can't, you can't do that with this, with this uh, operator, right? So if I wanted to fix that, then I'd have to say, oh, well, I mean to use the cout, the console out object, not the um, cout variable. And so suddenly I'm, I'm good to go, right? So namespaces are nice in that now I can do something like this, right? I can say, well, this is the Cout variable, but this is the Cout that's defined inside of namespace STD, which is a totally different um, beast. Now I could also, one last thing I'll show you here, is I could also create another namespace. And this kind of goes to what I was just saying. I could create, I can have two different classes named A, one that belongs to foo, one that belongs to bar. I could create two separate functions in the separate namespaces that have the same name. So I could do something like, um, you know, int um, spam and just have it, I don't know, return zero in this particular namespace. And then I'll have um, this one right here um, return uh, negative one. Okay. So I got function, 
two functions, right? One is in foo namespace, and then the other is in the var namespace. They do slightly different things, right? But I can use the same name because this is John Brown, and this is um, John Smith, or this is spam bar, and this is spam foo. Or, you know, another way to think of it is, you know, uh, foo colon colon spam, bar colon colon spam, right? So the spam that belongs to namespace bar and the spam that belongs to namespace foo. So now if I was to uh, call those functions, right, I'd have to specify, well, which spam am I talking about here? Because if I just try to call spam without specifying that, you know, spam isn't defined in this default space, right? It's defined as part of bar or foo. Now, if I was to define uh, spam here, well, then suddenly I'd be calling this one, right? So we'll make this return 99, okay? Um, so there's the default spam, I guess you could say, okay? But then I could also call the, uh, the foo spam, which would return zero, by specifying, oh, I want the I want the spam that belongs to namespace foo, and then I could also call the spam that belongs to namespace bar. Okay, and so then you can see there's the three values there: um, 99, 0, and negative 1. So it allows you to avoid name collisions like this, but also, you know, maybe namespace foo, everything that was associated with that namespace had to do with one particular sub uh, system of the software, right? Um, and maybe bar had to do with something else. Like you could think even model view controller. You know, when I taught software engineering class, we talked about this architecture. And so everything that had to do with the model, you could put in the model namespace. Everything that you could, you know, that had to do with the view would go in the view namespace. And then everything that had to do with the controller went into the controller namespace. So by doing that, you're making sure that you don't accidentally um, access the wrong thing or try to use the wrong thing, the wrong function or the wrong class or whatever. You're explicitly now having to say, no, this is a controller object because you have to say, you know, something like controller colon colon, right? There's no way that you're going to accidentally use the wrong class or the wrong function because you want the one that's in controller. Um, just like down here, there's no way you're going to accidentally use the wrong spam function because you want the one that's defined in the foo namespace. And maybe the foo namespace has to do with, you know, whatever thing, you know, has to do with this. And the bar namespace has to do with that, right? So those two namespaces are dedicated to two different types of basic overall functionality. And foo has one type of functionality, spam function in there does that. And then bar has overall another theme, another type of functionality. And so there's a spam function that furthers that functionality. So you avoid name collisions. You have another way of organizing and modularizing your code. And now you have a better idea of um, why using namespace STD is used, what that's all about, why sometimes you'll see, um, you know, people do standard colon colon C out. And that's, that is the better practice, by the way. I mean, that's, that's what they, you know, that's the best practice is not to use using namespace STD. Um, because, you know, you, when you do that, you don't have to explicitly say, oh, I want the C out in STD. You know, you can just say C out, and then there's that possibility that maybe you confuse it with something else named C out. So um, it's definitely better in terms of it's a best, better practice to not ever include using namespace STD. But we do it, you know, for the beginners, for the, for the new computer science students, because they have enough stuff to to deal with as it is. And so it's just easier just to say, oh, I put in using namespace STD in there uh, just for now and take my word for it. Well, now you don't have to take my word for it anymore. Now you understand why we do it and, and what a namespace is. Okay, so that's everything that I've got for you in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe, consider supporting the channel in multiple ways. We've got uh, memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. If you think the video sucked, well, then there's a thumbs down as well. Feel free to leave comments and let me know how it did. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.